two years on from the deadly January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol, Justice Department officials continue to work to hold those responsible to account. Congressional correspondent Lisa Desjardins is back with a report on where those prosecutions stand. An attack on the U.S. Capitol, now simply known by the date it happened, January 6th. Exactly two years ago today, thousands of supporters of President Donald Trump, encouraged by his words, We fight like hell, and if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. The Capitol violently disrupted the counting of electoral votes for the first time in our nation's history. Judy, there are protesters. Protesters have now broken into the U.S. Capitol. It would take six hours for law enforcement to secure the building and grounds and another nine for Congress to finish certifying the 2020 election results. An estimated 250 officers were injured that day, and a 2021 bipartisan Senate report found that at least seven people, including three police officers, lost their lives in connection with the attack. Since that report came out, two more officers who served on January 6th have died by suicide. At least 15 people were arrested in the Capitol on January 6th. Most rioters simply returned home, kickstarting the largest investigation in FBI history. It's really a, an enormous, enormous undertaking. Mary McCord heads Georgetown University's Institute for Constitutional Advocacy and Protection and is a former Justice Department official. More than 950 people have been charged with crimes related to January 6th. The scope of the charges coming out of the attack on the U.S. Capitol on January 6th is very broad. We have everything from misdemeanors such as trespassing on federal property all the way up to uh, felony offenses that carry a maximum penalty of 20 years imprisonment. Derek Evans served three months behind bars. I don't really know how I feel about everything right now, to be honest with you. I really don't. This was him that day. Live streaming on the Capitol steps, he entered the Capitol with the crowd. For that, Evans pleaded guilty to felony civil disorder, a charge he sees as grossly harsh because he committed no violence. He shows how the ideas, tensions, and resentments of January 6th remain. Evans still defends the people who were there. I think it was a group of patriotic Americans who were uh, frustrated with uh, what's been you know, happening in this country. But do you understand that as being part of that mob, that, that was a threat to democracy? Well, first of all, I, I still wasn't a part of a mob. I was part of a group of patriotic Americans who were exercising their natural God-given rights to free speech. Some might say you sound unrepentant. Is that right? No, that, that, that would not be accurate. I'm not going to regret uh, my actions on that day. I do regret that, um, you know, I was part of a crowd that has now been, um, you know, labeled as uh, people who, who were violent, even though I didn't do those things. Not everyone was violent, but the crowd overall was very violent. According to the FBI, so far, nearly 200 people have been arrested for assaulting police officers. That is more than one in five of all charged. Rioters have been arrested in 48 states. Oh, boys. According to a recent study, about a third of them have connections to extremist organizations. That includes two leaders of the far-right Oath Keepers. Stuart Rhodes and Kelly Meggs were found guilty of seditious conspiracy in November. It was the first conviction on that charge in almost three decades. So seditious conspiracy is a charge that's fairly rarely brought in, in the U.S., uh, but here it really does fit what happened. It is a conspiracy to violently hinder or delay the execution of U.S. law. More than 500 people have been convicted of various crimes. The vast majority of them pleaded guilty. The FBI is still seeking tips from the public about hundreds of other people involved in January 6th, including the person who planted two pipe bombs near the Republican and Democratic National Committee's headquarters the night before the riot. Meanwhile, hovering over it all have been questions and charges related to former President Trump's involvement. On this vote, the eye. One week after January 6th, the House of Representatives voted to impeach the then president, charging him with incitement of insurrection. A month later, laid upon the table. The uh, Senate will come to order. The Mr. Trump's team defended him in the U.S. Speech. Senate. President Trump did not incite the horrific, terrible riots of January 6th. 
where a majority found him guilty, a figure short of the required two-thirds. He was acquitted. President Trump summoned the mob, assembled the mob, and lit the flame of this attack. That summer, a House Select Committee launched what would become an 18-month investigation into January 6th, focused on former President Trump. After interviewing more than 1,000 witnesses, the committee aired testimony in 10 public hearings from those close to Trump. The president said something to the effect of, I'm the effing president, take me up to the Capitol now. And those who bore the brunt of the violence. Never in my wildest dreams did I think that as a police officer, as a law enforcement officer, I would find myself in the middle of a battle. Last month, as it finished its work, the committee referred Mr. Trump to the Department of Justice on four criminal charges, including aiding or comforting those involved in an insurrection. For his part, Trump and his allies have stressed these words of his to the crowd on January 6th. I know that everyone here will soon be marching over to the Capitol building to peacefully and patriotically make your voices heard. He has decried accusations against him and insisted he is a political victim. Why aren't they investigating November 3rd, a rigged and stolen election? To this day, the former president continues to lie about his 2020 election loss. He has repeatedly praised rioters and condemned their prosecution. What they've done to torment people and go after people like never before. I don't think anything like this has ever happened in our country. Two years on, despite the mayhem and bloodshed, the danger of January 6th lingers. It is a powerful political device for some on the right. Remember Derek Evans? He's now running for Congress and says the actions that got him prison time help with many voters. Honestly, the, the biggest response I get from the people of Southern West Virginia when it comes to January 6th is thank you. Thank you for having enough courage to go do what so many people wanted to do. Administration. In November, oh, Trump kicked off another presidential campaign for 2024. Days later, Attorney General Merrick Garland appointed a special counsel to continue investigations into the former president's actions in the aftermath of the 2020 election. I have concluded that it is in the public interest to appoint a special counsel. Earlier this week, as trials and investigations into the January 6th attack on the Capitol continue, the People's House once again opened its doors to visitors. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Lisa Desjardins in Washington. On this anniversary of January 6th, correspondents Laura Barone Lopez and Nick Schifrin also took a look at the domestic and international consequences of that day. How has January 6th changed the way the United States is perceived around the world? Well, there's no question that January 6th was a shock to the system. The biggest headwind to our work in trying to support those who are seeking democracy for themselves and having a more democratic world is what happens in the United States. We can look at the fact that our system uh, worked. It was for sure a propaganda gift to authoritarian adversaries. What those countries can aspire to do is to uh, weaken us internally to uh, cause us to further divide ourselves, including through misinformation and propaganda and influence operations. Are you concerned about voter suppression, uh, gerrymandering when it comes to where the U.S. democracy stands? I am very worried about the state of our politics. I'm very worried about what's happening in, in, in Congress. I'm worried about the state of the Republican Party. But, but I am more optimistic about the ability of Americans to sustain this, you know, diverse, maddening, complicated uh, democracy we call our own. You can find both Nick's and Laura's interviews at pbs.org newshour.